Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Thank you very much once again for being with us, following in these weekly videos regarding the Gita for Everyone program. Today we have come to the last chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 18, the perfection of renunciation. This has been a very pleasurable journey presenting all these chapters. Krishna gives benefits to those who read Bhagavad Gita regularly. There are different Shastras, Gita Mahatmya and other scriptures that explain the glories of reading Bhagavad Gita, presenting Bhagavad Gita. So today we're going to try, in essence, to present you what is the message that Krishna gives you in this chapter. Now, remember this is the longest chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, 78 verses, chapter 2, the second longest, 72 verses. So what is the title of this chapter? The Perfection of Renunciation. So let's take that word, let's try to unpack it, let's try to analyze it. What does it mean, the perfection? So we have come to the last part, the last section, and as Sila Prabhupada explains, quoting Bhaktivinoda Thakur and other Acharyas, this chapter 18 is the summary. Uh, chapter 2 is the summary, and chapter 18 is the summary of the Bhagavad Gita. Now, first of all, let us go back to our uh, context, to the analogy that we have given for the last section, chapter 13 to 18. The jiva, the living entity, you and I, we are, are in, in, in a prison house, and thus the teachings that we find in the first section and in the middle section, it's very hard to apply. Why? Because we are caught up in material nature, the modes, etc. So, what is the topic of this, of this particular chapter? Remember in chapter 13, Krishna is presented as the lawyer. In chapter 14, he gives us a tool to break through these modes. In chapter 15, he gives us the map of the escape plan, the Vedas. Chapter 16, he recommends us who do we have to associate with, what qualities do we need to develop. In chapter 17, he gives us the key, the Om Tat Sat, everything should be offered to the Lord. So what is left to say? Here, Krishna explains that if we surrender, if nothing else works, if just like in a prison house and we are trying to escape, and the lawyer comes in, Krishna comes in, in the form of Paramatma, or through the agency of the spiritual master, and he recommends that we just surrender. If the living entity surrenders to the guidance of Krishna, then the person is free from this imprisonment. That is basically the topic, the essential message that Krishna is giving in this final chapter. Now let's go through the format. The beginning is that um, Arjuna, asks his last question. The first question that he presents here, or the only question that he presents in this, in this chapter is what is renunciation and what is a renunciant? What does it mean? Now, let's remember that renunciation is something that Krishna has started explaining from chapter 2. And then it took a little bit more of explanation in chapter 3, in chapter 4, etc. What does exactly mean this concept of sacrifice? Krishna invites Arjuna in chapter 3, text number 9, to work for him. That work involves sacrifice, sacrifice, involves renunciation of the fruits of the work. So that's the beginning. And Krishna briefly explains what actually is renunciation. In very simple words, the, the person who's renouncing material activities, that's a renunciant. And the act of renouncing the fruits of the activity, that's renunciation. And he will categorically explain once more, just like he has done in chapter 14 and also in chapter 17, he will describe different things in the different modes. He will describe things as renunciation, knowledge, the worker, action, understanding, determination, happiness in the modes. So when we read this chapter, it's very similar to other chapters that we read. Chapter 14, 17 and 18 are very similar in that context. So that's, that's how the chapter begins. Those are some of the important sections. And it ends with Sanjaya giving five verses to close down the whole conversation, the whole dialogue. Let's remember the Bhagavad Gita, it's started 
by Dhritarashtra asking his secretary. Dhritarashtra was the blind king, the father of the Kurus, and he's asking to Sanjaya what's happening. In the far distant place of Kurukshetra, the Dharma Shetra, the place of sacrifice, the place of religiosity, what's happening there in this battlefield where my sons and the sons of Pandu are ready to fight. So the ending of the chapter and the ending of the Bhagavad Gita are these five verses where Sanjaya manifests symptoms of ecstasy. He says, my hairs are standing on end and I am uh, uh, full of wonder after uh, remembering Krishna's form and remembering this uh, dialogue that has just taken place. The topic, as I pointed out, is surrendering. How the Jiva, how Arjuna, how the living entity needs to surrender to Krishna and in that way can achieve perfection. So that is more or less the, the content that this, this chapter has. Um, very interesting because it has technical parts of it and also has a very summarized explanation of what the Barna, um, Barna system is. And after this, Krishna gives us in around 30 verses, he gives us the summary. If you don't have time to read 78 verses, or if you don't have time to read the 700 verses, if you just read the last 30 or so verses of the Bhagavad Gita, you can get the essence of the whole book. Here in these last verses, Krishna explains what is the main aspect, what are the main aspects that constitute pure devotional service. And interestingly, although there is no, there's only one question of Arjuna in text number one, there is one question by Krishna in text number 72, where he asked him, he asked Arjuna, have you listened with an attentive mind? Hmm? And Prabhupada explains, because um, um, Krishna was ready to tell the whole thing again, if he hasn't understood. And then he asked him, is your illusion and ignorance gone? Are, are they dispelled now? This is the question that, Arjun, that Krishna puts at the end. So very interesting, very different. Perhaps this is the only question that uh, Krishna presents through the whole book. So in this way, we have this um, summary of the Bhagavad Gita, the summary, the essence of the devotional service. And we find also something very interesting here, which is the benefits or the blessings the bonus that Krishna gives to those who present the Bhagavad Gita. He gives three uh, blessings in, in texts 68 and 69. He says, um, first of all, you will obtain pure devotional service. Secondly, you will become the dearest devotee of the Lord. And third, you will go back to Him. These are the three blessings for those who study or present the Gita to others. Return to him, become the most dear devotee, and no one will ever become more dear than him or her, the ones who present the Bhagavad Gita. And finally, pure devotional service, service is guaranteed for that person. So this is the Bhagavad Gita, we can say in a nutshell, in less than 10 minutes. And the last five verses, as I mentioned earlier, the end of the chapter and the end of the Bhagavad Gita are described by Arjuna. And he finally gives also a blessing, saying that whoever or wherever there is the recitation of the Bhagavad Gita, wherever there is Krishna and Arjuna, we can find extraordinary power, opulence, victory, and morality. So this is the ending of the Bhagavad Gita. So we hope that you have enjoyed these presentations. I personally had a very, as I said, pleasant time having to read and having to summarize and having to remember and rehearse. Sometimes we had to do several takes for these videos. So it is our pleasure to help you in some way, helping Srila Prabhupada's mission that you establish these Gita programs. You can do it individually and ideally, as Krishna recommends, you present it also to others. So there's uh, many of these resources, materials. You can write to us, connect with us on Facebook, ISKCON Congregation and uh, we can facilitate some of these resources. You can communicate with us through emails or Skype, and we're happy to um, tutor you or to mentor you so, or to share some of the information that we have researched regarding presenting the Bhagavad Gita. So on behalf of ISKCON Congregational Development Ministry, thank you for your time, thank you for your support and your feedback, and I hope this uh, will give you more and more facilities and encouragement to present Bhagavad Gita as it is 
the dream of Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna.